coming up next on NMZ Live TV. I believe it's coming to the church of God. God is just looking for some radical people who would praise him despite of, in spite of, in the midst of. Hallelujah. Up next on NMZ Live TV. Throughout the Psalms, we are encouraged to praise God. As a matter of fact, the last Psalm, Psalm 115, begins with those words, Praise ye the Lord. And then it ends, Let everything that hath breath praise ye the Lord. And today, we welcome you here from the New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church as you come in and you join us as you worship with us today. And as the psalmist also said, today we are here to worship the Lord in the beauty of His holiness. The New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church is located on Blue Hill Road, just south of Cowpen Road on the beautiful island of New Providence in the Bahamas. Our senior pastor is Pastor Alfred Stewart, and I am Pastor Theophilus Claridge, pastor of the children's ministry here at the New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church. There may be members watching. There may be persons who are interested or followers. And you would like to know more about the New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, or especially to our members. Because you are shut in, you may not be able to bring in your tithe or your love offering. You may call us and someone will collect us. And you can call us at 341-1804. That's 341-1804. You may also send a WhatsApp message at 341-3726. Also to our members and our followers, if you save our WhatsApp number 341-3726, you can receive blasts from the New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church of all the happenings here at the church. Some of you may like to email us because you may have a longer message, or you may have something special you want to say or send. And you may email us at new.mount.zion at gmail.com. That's new.mount.zion at gmail.com. And we invite you to like and follow our social media pages, especially on Facebook and Instagram. And we say subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if this this message today, or any of our messages, or any of our programs have been a blessing to you, we ask that you please share our content. And you may just share it on any social media page, and all we ask that you use our handle backslash, you know the backslash, the New Mount Zion. That's backslash, the New Mount Zion. Today, so many of us are alone, whether we are by ourselves or sometimes, especially in a large crowd, we are still alone. And our speaker today, Pastor Sharice Evans, pastor of the women's ministry here at the New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, comes with the second part, part two, of our two-part series, You Are Not Alone. And in today's series, in today's message, Pastor Sharice talks about the power of the Holy Spirit working with us 
as we transition through this life. And so today, we say, enjoy, but also let the words Pastor Sharice gives minister to you. And just before Pastor Sharice comes, Brother Corey Heal and the New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church will minister in song. And following Brother Heal and the New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church praise team, Pastor Sharice comes with her message, you are not alone.
Let's bow our heads in a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Fathers, we come before your presence. We praise you and we bless your name. Father, we thank you for another opportunity to hear what you are saying to the church. Father, we say, let your Holy Spirit speak to our hearts today. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my Redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I want to say welcome to all of our visitors, especially those who are joining us virtually by Facebook or YouTube. We want to welcome you to the service as well. And I promise that I will not be long on today. Now, verse 16 of John chapter 14, which was our foundation scripture, reads as follows. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. As we continue in part two of the sermon, you are not alone. The role of the Holy Spirit. I wish to recap a few points from the previous message, which was part one. We know that Jesus told his disciples a few days before he was about to die on Calvary that he would pray to the Father, and he would give the disciples another comforter, that he may abide with them forever. The word comforter is the word parakletos, which literally means one called alongside to help. We also stress the fact that the Holy Spirit is not an it. It's not, it's not a thing, a, thing, a, a force, force, or a figment, or a figment of figment one's imagination. imagination. He is a person. Look at your neighbor and say, he is a person. And a member of the Trinity. And as our paracletos, the Holy Spirit does several things in the lives of the believer. In John 14 and 26, it says, He shall teach you all things and bring back to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. In John chapter 15, verse 26, he says, He will testify or bear witness of Jesus. In John chapter 16, verses 8 through 11, it says, and when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin, because the world no, know me not, of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and ye see me no more, of judgment, because the prince of the world is judged. Verses 13 through 15 of chapter 16 says, How be it, when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. Today we want to continue with the role of the Holy Spirit. Today is Pentecost Sunday. Look at your neighbor and say, today is Pentecost Sunday. 
According to research, it is also called Whit Sunday and is celebrated on Sunday that falls on the 50th day of Easter. The name is derived from the Greek word which means 50th, as Pentecost Sunday takes place on the 50th day of Easter. It is a big festival in the Christian church and observes the descent of the Holy Spirit on the apostles and other disciples following the crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus Christ. It marks the Christian's mission to the world and the end of the Easter cycle, which began with Ash Wednesday. Look at your neighbor and tell them it's Pentecost Sunday. And we know that Pentecost is all about the coming of the Spirit to empower the disciples to continue the work that Jesus had started. Another role of the Holy Spirit is to empower the believers. Tell your neighbor, the role of the Holy Spirit is to empower believers. The word empower means to give someone the authority or power to do something. Jesus reminded his disciples of the power they would receive from the Holy Spirit. In Luke chapter 24, verse 49, and if you have, if you have your Bibles, you can follow. It says, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. The word endued is the Greek word and duo, N means in, and duo means sink, to go in or under, to put on. So the word also has a meaning of sinking into a garment. The word power is the Greek word dunamis, and we know that that refers to God's miracle working power. Then in Acts 1 and 8, it says, but ye shall receive power. Someone say power after the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be my witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the uttermost part of the earth. Let's take a minute and examine this verse. In this verse, we see the word power, which is also the Greek word dunamis, God's miracle working power. The word witnesses is the Greek word matus, which means a legal or historical spectator who can give witness to what he has seen. Martus, martos is also of the origin of our English word martyr. According to Bible reference, it is someone who embodies the example of Jesus by being willing to die for what they believe about him. The Holy Spirit empowers the apostle to be witnesses by spreading the gospel even in the midst of persecution. The Holy Spirit also empowers the believer for victory over the flesh. Romans chapter 8 verses 12 and 13 says, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. The word mortify means to kill. What are the deeds of the body? It's sin. The Apostle Paul says, through the Spirit, we are to mortify the deeds of the body. Tell your neighbor, it's the Spirit who gives you victory over the flesh. If you want to fall asleep in here, you won't fall asleep today. Doing a lot of talking. We could never overcome the flesh. It's only through the spirit. I like how one author puts it. He says, flesh can't overcome flesh. Flesh can't gain the victory over flesh. Sin can't gain the victory over sin. Humanists cannot defeat humanists. And so we need a transformation. And that's what the Holy Spirit does in Romans chapter 8, verses 5 through 11. Once we have been transformed so that the life within us is now the life of God, 
in the presence of his indwelling spirit. We have the power in the spirit to overcome the flesh. Additionally, the apostle Paul himself, knowing and experiencing this empowerment of the Holy Spirit, he prayed for the saints at Ephesus to be strengthened, to be empowered. Ephesians 3 and 16 says that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by his spirit in the inner man. In Romans chapter 8, verses 26 and 27, we find these words. Likewise, the spirit also help it our infirmities for we know not what we should pray for as we ought but the spirit the bible says itself but it should be himself make it intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered verse 27 says and he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit because he make it intercession for the saints according to the will of God. In these verses, we see two roles of the Holy Spirit. First, he helpeth our infirmities. I want you to say that he helpeth our infirmities. Pastor Stewart, do I have permission to use this cross for a minute? Pardon? Do I have permission to use that cross over there for a minute? Brother Ricardo, could you bring that cross for me, please? I was trying to bring a piece of wood, but I was unable to bring it. But I, I want to demonstrate what that phrase, help it, our infirmities, means. I'm going to need you to help me, Brother Ricardo. Come up, come around here. Now, the Greek word for this phrase, help it, is a word that had seven syllables, which I dare not try to pronounce. But it means to take hold of opposite together. So, if I'm trying to lift it, I I can barely lift this. This here represents infirmity. The Bible says the Holy Spirit helpeth our infirmities. And we know helpeth means that the action is continuous. It doesn't start and stop. It continues. The trans other translation may have it helps, meaning that this action does not end. It continues. So me trying to lift this, this is impossible. This is hard. This is difficult. And this is some of the things that we are going through, some things that we are experiencing in our personal lives. We try to carry it ourselves. We try to do it all alone. Marriages are failing, and we're trying to carry it all alone. Parents are ailing. And we're getting depressed and discouraged. And we're trying to carry it all alone. There's confusion in the family. And we're trying to carry it all alone. He says the Holy Spirit help it with our infirmity. Which means to hold opposite end. Brother Ricardo, hold the other end. That's the role of the Holy Spirit. He says, he helpeth our infirmities. That word also means to cooperate, to assist. And the word infirmities 
is the Greek word asthenei, which means feebleness of mind and body by implication, a malady. You know, many of us limit the word infirmities to just sickness. But like I said earlier, it can be anything that you're going through according to the Dake's annotated reference Bible. Infirmity is any weakness in body, soul, spirit, faith, ability. Sometimes we go through some situations that causes us to lose hope. It causes us to lose faith. That's a weakness. And when we get in that state, the Holy Spirit comes and he helpeth our infirmities. Anybody need the Holy Spirit to help them in the midst of their infirmities? I don't know about you, but every morning, five o'clock, I found myself parked in Southwest Plaza, walking over Blue Hill Road to the gas station and back to Blue Hill Road, Southwest Plaza. And I walk in there for an half an hour, just praying. Because that's how the Holy Spirit is helping me in the midst of whatever my weaknesses is. Hallelujah. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4, the Apostle Paul says, And I was with you in weakness. That same word is translated as the night and is and in fear and in much trembling and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom but in demonstration of the spirit and power so in the midst of Paul's human weakness the spirit helped him by empowering him to be a witness of Jesus Christ in preaching the gospel the Bible says there was demonstration of the spirit and power. Tell your neighbor that the Holy Spirit wants to bring back demonstration of the spirit and power back into the house of God. He wants demonstration where the blind eyes are made to see. He wants demonstration and power where the deaf is made to hear. He wants demonstration and power where the cripple is, be, is able to walk again. He wants demonstration and power where the sick is healed. He wants demonstration where deliverance is given to those who need to be loosed from whatever infirmities have them bound. Tell your neighbor, we need demonstration of the spirit and power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And I believe it's coming to the church of God. God is just looking for some radical people who would praise him despite of, in spite of, in the midst of. Hallelujah. Demonstration of the power of the spirit. Secondly, in, in, in this verse, the Holy Spirit is our intercessor. Look at your neighbor and tell them that the Holy Spirit is my intercessor. There is no better intercessor than the Holy Spirit who make it intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Verse 27 says, and he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what the mind of the spirit, because he make it intercession for the saints according to the will of God. You know, it's okay to have some intercessors. You have friends that are intercessors, but sometimes not all the time. Folks are making intercession for you in accordance to the will of God. God may want you to have a Jaguar, but someone may be interceding for a Nissan Tiana. No offense to the Nissan Tiana drivers because I got one.
And I like how Richard and Henry Blackaby in the book Experiencing God explains this verse. When I read it those years ago, I had to put a big eye there. The seeing eye to say, okay, that stood out to me. That, that's a point I need to remember. And I love how they, exp they explain it. This is what it says in the book Experiencing God from Richard Blackaby. He tells a story of how he had purchased a blue skewing bike for his son, his son's birthday. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that word right, but anyway, he purchased a particular kind of bike for his son and he hid it in the garage. He said his son was only interested in playing with small toys that would quickly break. As his father, he sought to elevate his son's desire until he wanted something of quality and durability. His father continued to work with his son for a while and eventually decided that he wanted a blue squin bike. So the father continued to convince him that he needed this bike. Notice the son never saw the bike. The father was just working on him, saying to him, boy, it's good to have this particular bike. It's, you know, he was just rehearsing this with the boy daily until the boy came to the point where he received, you know what? I need this bike that my father was telling me about. And like I said, eventually he decided that he wanted that blue bike, which his father had waiting for him in the garage. Look at your neighbor and say, it was already there. The father just had to convince the son that he wanted it. Likewise, the Holy Spirit knows what God has in his garage for you. Tell your neighbor, the Holy Spirit knows what God has in his garage for you. It says the Holy Spirit knows the will of the Father for the saints. It is already there. But it's the Holy Spirit's task, which is to convince you to want it. You know, sometimes we pray into God that I want Mr. Right. I want this light-skinned, tall, handsome guy. And we're telling God what we want. And God, no, guess what? This light-skinned, tall, handsome guy, he ain't worth two pennies. He can't hold down a job. He don't know how to treat his mother, treat his sister. So that means he don't know how to treat you. But you play, you're praying from the flesh and the Holy Spirit is trying to convince you that, that that short, dark guy, that's the one for you. That's the one who's going to treat you like a queen. Look how he takes care of his mother. Look how he takes care of his sister. He's industrious. He can do these things. But you're too busy play, praying from the flesh. Looking at what the eyes can see. We want to satisfy the flesh when the Holy Spirit is there trying to convince you that God has this for you in the, in the garage. And eventually, you get the revelation. And you start seeing Mr. Short and Doc. And you want him. Hallelujah. That wasn't for me. The Holy Spirit gives gifts to the believer. Look at your neighbor and say, the Holy Spirit gives gifts to the believer. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 4 through 11, and I'm reading from the NIV translation, says, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. 
To one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by that one Spirit, to another miraculous power, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. So don't get jealous because someone has a particular gift. It's the Holy Spirit who distributes them to each one as he determines. So if brother so-and-so have the gift of prophecy and sister Sue has the word of knowledge, that's how the, the Holy Spirit determined that he was going to distribute the gift to sister so-and-so. But guess what? What is it for? It's all for the betterment of the church. Not to cause division, but to unify the church, to empower the church to go forward in the work of the Lord. And my last point today, the Holy Spirit produces fruit in the lives of the believer. Tell your neighbor, the Holy Spirit produces fruit in the lives of the believer. Galatians 5, 22 through 23 says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. I believe that the fruit is evidence that something exists. But in this case, it is evidence that someone exists. And the someone is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit uses the events of your life to produce the fruit of the Spirit. Look at your neighbor and say, he's using what you're going through to produce some fruit in your life. Hallelujah. And we learn in, in, in John chapter 15 that the husbandman has to prune meaning to cut. So sometimes some things that you go through, it's difficult. It's hard. It's a struggle. But the Holy Spirit wants to produce fruit in your life. James chapter 1 verses 2 through 4 says, My brethren, count it all joy when ye shall fall in divers temptation. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith work at patience. But let patience have a perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, which means complete, lacking nothing. So every challenging situation that you go through in your life, it's the process the Holy Spirit uses to produce fruit in your life. He uses the process to produce love. He uses the process to produce joy. Anybody need some joy? He, he uses the process to produce peace. Anybody need some peace? He uses the process to, to produce long suffering. He uses the process to produce gentleness. He uses the process to produce goodness and faith. Tell your neighbor that there is fruit coming out of my trial. Hallelujah. Come on, let's put our hands together and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. We want to give God thanks for his word on today. I'm going to invite you to stand at this time. Come on, let's give the Lord another hand clap of praise. I don't know about you, 
but I know that the Lord has spoken to me through his word today. I know that he has assured me that I have the great one who lives within me. And because of this fact, I don't have to bear my infirmities alone. You are not alone. So it does not matter what you're going through. It doesn't matter how rough the situation may be. It does not matter the trials that you're facing right now. You have the assurance that you are not alone. Even when the enemy desires to make you feel as if you're alone. We have God's word, his assurance, that the Holy Spirit helpeth us with our infirmities. He also makes intercession for us. Why? He knows the will of God and he prays the will of God for us as God's children. So this morning, this afternoon, you may be in here today. And you may have been complaining about what you've going through. In fact, not only complaining, you've been glorifying the situation. Everyone you see, you've been telling them about the situation. But this morning, God has spoken to you. That guess what? I'm king over your situation. And I have sent help in the midst of your situation. If that's you in here this morning, I want you to give the Lord a wave offering. So we're going to go before the Lord in prayer today. And we want to thank him for the Holy Spirit, for the comforter, the one who speaks peace to our troubled heart. You know, the songwriter says, speak to my heart. Give me your holy word. If I can hear from you, then I'll know what to do. I won't go alone. I'll never go on my own. Just let your spirit guide and let your word abide. Speak to my heart, Lord. Father, it's in the name of Jesus that we come before your presence today. Father, we give you thanks and praise for your word of assurance, for your word of comfort. We thank you, Lord God, for letting us know that we are not alone. That in the midst of everything that we go through, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the Helper is right there to help us, to offer assistance to us. So Father, we thank you for the Holy Spirit and we thank you for this assurance. Now, Father God, we repent before you, Lord God, because many times we have not acknowledged the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So, Father, we ask that you would forgive us. And, Father, we pray, Lord God, that you would give us an insatiable desire to acknowledge the Holy Spirit in everything that we do. Father, we pray for each person here. Father, whatever the need is that they have today, we present it to you. Father, because you are concerned about everything that concerns us. You said in your word that we are to cast all of our cares upon you because you care for us. So Father, every care we present it to you and we cast it, we hurl it upon you, Lord God. Father, we thank you for touching us. We thank you for giving us peace in our minds. Father, we thank you, Lord God, 
for calming our fears. For your word says you've not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So Father, we thank you right now for soundness of mind for your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be in here today and you have not made that decision to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. We want to give you an opportunity. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand. Even those of you who may be watching us virtually, we also want to give you an opportunity to accept Jesus as Lord and Savior. It's not a difficult thing you need to do. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him, Jesus, from the dead, you shall be saved. So this morning, I just want you to repeat these words. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, the one whom you sent for my sins because I was unable to save my sins, my, myself. So Father, I ask that you would come into my heart, that you would forgive me of every sin that I've committed, that you would turn me around and set me on the right path. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Hallelujah. You are born again. It was a privilege to have been here with you today. And as we leave, we ask God's grace, God's peace, and God's blessings to be with you throughout the course of this day and throughout the course of this week. Again, we are the New Mount Zion Missionary Baptist Church, and we ask God's blessings and God's peace to be with you throughout this day.